Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. In this video, I wanna show you how to create these 3D route animations using geo layers and After Effects. Now you do need geo layers in order to follow along. Geo layers is a third party paid plugin. I'll have an affiliate link down in the description below so you can check out geo layers and learn all about how the program works. Then geo layers is an absolute must have plugin. Now also I'll link to my geo layers three mini course down in the description below. So if you're new to geo layers, then check out my mini course. It's gonna run you through all the basics on how to use the program. But in this video, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a few of the basics of how it works. Throughout the mini course, you're gonna learn the basics right up to doing some more advanced animations. And I'm gonna show you how to make nine really cool and unique looking animations. Now, if you're interested in that, there'll be a link down in the description below. But the first thing I want to do with GLAs is create a new project. Then I can simply zoom into the area that I want to create my map around. Now, this is just a rough area doesn't need to be exactly right at this point. We can change, you can set your resolution and then hit next. Now I wanna set up the actual map. Now there's lots of different maps that are built into GeoLayers, but this is the map that I'm gonna use here and I don't want any labels. So I just want this to basically have this outline effect with no labels. I can choose different ones. And each of these have their own customized options. So you can go through and customize all of that. Again, in my mini course, I go through and show you this in more detail. So I'm just gonna create my map. It's gonna create my main composition here with all the stuff that I need and I can navigate around my map. Now next I wanna create a little path between say two areas. So what I can do is I can search for Dallas because I want to basically draw an area in Dallas and I can add it down here to my browser. And I can also search for an area nearby like something like Garland for instance. I can just search for this and I can also add that to my browser. Now if I select both of those, I've got these areas now highlighted. One of the things that I wanna do is just draw a path between these two places. So if I select both of those, I can come down and connect the features and I can select how I want the line to be drawn. If I click car, what it's gonna do is draw a line over the main roads because GeoLayers takes all of this extra data. It's not just a map, it takes all of the traffic data, it takes all of these other things that you can work with inside of the program. So it's really, really powerful. So once I've got my area, what I can do is I can simply just draw this feature onto my map and you can see it there. If I double click this, I can see that now on my map. What I'm going to do is open up that world comp view and I can select a new adjustment layer because I want to adjust the map. Now the map is hidden underneath so you don't need to mess around with that because GeoLayers takes care of that. But what I'm going to do is come up here and add the tint effect. And these are the colors I've ended up with here. I've mapped my black to be this lighter color here, this light blue and my white I've mapped to this darker blue color here so that we end up with this tint effect which which doesn't affect the stroke line of that um, of that path. Now I can always scale this line up if I want it bigger or smaller. And then to this, I can also add a gradient ramp. And I've gone this purple and sort of pink color here. You can choose whatever you want. It doesn't actually matter, but I've just added this gradient ramp to that line effect. And then I can add a glow effect over the top. So if I basically scale up this glow radius, kind of adjust this until I kind of get the desired result. And then once I've got that, just to make it a little bit more intense, what I can even do is just duplicate that and it really makes that line quite intense, gives it that nice sort of glow effect. Then we're ready to start sort of animating this line and animating our camera to follow. Now the way that we animate everything inside of GeoLayers is we use our viewer up here. And what I can do is basically use my, my right mouse clicker to basically zoom the camera in using my mouse wheel to sort of position it here. I can create a start keyframe at this point and then I can move along my timeline and I can start moving that camera to wherever I need it to be. And this is basically just like keyframe animating, right? So I'm just kind of 
getting the keyframes, maybe zoom out a little bit here in the right position. And then I can even add like a little spin or something zooming out. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can always reanimate this, but we're just kind of getting the, the sort of the direction of the camera. Now you can animate that camera to follow along with that actual line and animate it as well, all using GeoLayers. I cover that in my mini course as well. But for this one, I just wanna show you another way of doing this. We can grab our line here, come down to the add and, and then select the trims path. With this, we can then animate the start position here of that line and then have it animate all the way back to zero. Maybe bring this out a little bit quicker here and then just adjust this to kind of get it to the right sort of timing to follow our camera. Now you notice about here, the camera sort of stops and starts. You can come into the main world comp here, hit U. And with those keyframes, what you can actually do is make them change the keyframe interpolation to be continuous bezier. Then I can come into the graph editor and actually just smooth out these animations, right? So all this does is basically just smooth out the flow of that animation so that it doesn't sort of stop and start. It kind of continuously moves the whole time. So you can see there, it doesn't really stop. It more just animates with the scene rather than stopping and starting. So you can get some really nice looking animations. One other thing I added here to kind of get that dark map sort of effect was I added a solid and I can then basically just add the ellipse tool and draw out a bit of a mask, select invert, and then just feather this up. Something like that. And you can even control, you know, the amount on the opacity and the size of that as well. And that just kind of darkens the edges. So it just kind of gives it this nice little focus on the area that we want to. So if we play through now what we've got, you can see that we have this nice little animation here, the line, and it's all looking nice. We can go back and readjust the camera timing or the, the trims path to kind of animate that line quicker or slower. If I go back to my main view over here, I need to hit unlink map. That allows me to move around the map without affecting the animation, right? So I can move in here and zoom around however I like. Now, if I go to that point here where it ends and just double click, I can create basically a point at that. If I add that to the browser and come down here, I can add a label to that point. Now, when I go to the map, this is the great thing about GeoLays. It's already created that point exactly where we want it. Now, if I take that layer and just open it up, it's in its own composition. What I can do is come up here to the ellipse tool. And essentially what I can do is from that point, I'm holding command and shift here on my Mac and I can essentially draw a point. And if I turn off all those other layers and go back, and if I essentially make that layer 3D and then come up here and select these check boxes, what it'll do is it'll sit that point right on that map. So I don't have to worry about trying to animate it. This is the great thing about GeoLays. It just animates all this stuff for me. Now with this layer, what I could do is I could just hit T, animate, you know, the opacity down. And I could even duplicate this and then come up to the height slider and move this up and then essentially just scale this down, right? Maybe scale this one up in opacity. So we kind of end up with this little interesting sort of marker here on the, you know, popping up. What I can even do is take those, make, turn on the opacity keyframes, animate these from zero, and I can even animate the height slider here. If I hit U, I can bring that up and animate that from zero and we kind of end up with this nice little animation like this. Now, the great thing about GeoLays is now I can go back through, reanimate my camera, I can move all my things, and it doesn't matter, that stroke line and those little markers that I've put in place are going to stay there. So this is like the power of having something like GeoLays. If you're into making maps, 
this this just speeds up this entire process if i think how i would make this without geolays it is possible but it would take me a lot longer to do essentially the same simple animation the other great things about geolays is you can add in country outlines so you can basically it already has this data built in you can draw these as solids with outlines you can animate them you can do all that you can even add more paths between things the other thing is it basically allows you to import all all of this third party data so any other you know map program that you're using if you're using like your GPS or something and you recorded your trek you could essentially just take that data and import it straight into geolayers and work with it exactly like we are on the screen here it's already all done and you can even automatically animate the line for you and do all of that stuff so there's lots and lots of things you can do with geolayers again if you want to learn more about it you can check it out via my links down in the description below thanks for watching and I catch you in the next one peace